It's a form of communication that's gotten lost in the shuffle in our internet age. A letter is a personal thing. It was very personal for Helga Kissel, who wrote her now husband Leo frequently during World War II when they lived in Germany and America. It was a different time. That's one of the things I think we uh, lose nowadays is a person-to-person -person contact. And it's very sad, really. What hasn't changed is the way war violently uproots people. Millions of Syrians have been driven from their homes. It happened to Helga when her Berlin home was bombed in 1945. Went to the railroad station, which was wall to wall people all trying to get out. And as it happened, our train was the next to the last train that ever left this city. Who then can better understand the plight of Sajida, a 16-year-old Syrian refugee who's the same age Helga was when she became a refugee? Recently, the poverty-fighting organization CARE began connecting past and present refugees, past and present recipients of CARE aid packages with the help of, of all things, the letter. As part of CARE's special delivery program, Helga wrote to Sajida in Zarqa, Jordan. I know. It is always difficult to adjust in a different country. I feel very deeply for you. There will be better times ahead. She struck a chord with a teenager whose future is uncertain, who feels like she left herself in Syria. I think people, they want to send a positive message to Syrian refugees in particular right now, and this campaign is giving them uh, a way to do that. This is a person-to-person -person thing. This 87-year-old Colorado woman says writing her letter helped her come to terms with her own experience while comforting someone thousands of miles away. Let's face it, we live a very selfish life over here. We have everything we need. <laughs> while Syrian refugees are very much in need and could use some understanding and compassion, that personal touch most of all. And if a letter can do it, I think it's wonderful. Hendrik Sabrandi, CCTV, Denver.